Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, Anton. Hi, uh, good afternoon, Catch. Um, Thanks for logging right, in, afternoon. Anton. Thanks for logging in, everyone. Yes. Good afternoon. Thanks for logging in. Uh, I'm Anton, head of uh, passive transport. And I'm Kat Chapilada, Senior Policy Officer at Makati Business Club, Passive Transport with MBC and Conrad Adenauer Foundation. Just completed a series of consultations with citizens to improve traffic in the city. Traffic, we all face it every day. We all suffer through its effects. I hate it, and I hate how much I have to think about it. Don't you wish that there's a better way to navigate through our city? So we here at Pasig City want to try something new to address traffic. We've been consulting with citizens for the past few months on biking to work. Together with Makati Business Club and through the Digital Democracy Project, Pasig has held two online citizens assemblies and one round table discussion to better understand what Pasigenios and Pasig businesses think about biking to work. Pasig, thank you for welcoming MBC and the Conrad Adenauer Foundation to once again assist through the Digital Democracy Project. The MBC's Digital me, Democracy um, Project Kat? helps government. Yes. Um, I, we can't see Anton right now. Um, Anton, maybe we could request you to turn on and off your camera. Oh, sure. Okay. Sorry, I think my um, video might have, might have stopped. Um, let me try that again. Ah, there. there I can go. see you now. <laughs> thanks, Excellent. thanks, Anton. Okay, thanks. that works. Yep, that works. Sure, okay. I hope uh, our viewers can now see it. Okay, there you go. Okay, as I was saying, thank you for welcoming MBC and Conrad Adenauer Foundation. The Digital Democracy Project helps governments consult with citizens using online tools to craft policies tailored to the needs of their citizens. And based on these consultations, Passing Transport has proposed working on creating a cycling advisory board to improve biking conditions in the city. Now, this is not exactly a new idea. The creation of a cycling advisory board is in line with the DOH recommendation for cities to create active mobility advisory bodies to promote, to promote active transport and to ensure continuous consultation with active transport users. Other cities in the Philippines, such as, such as Cebu and Iloilo, have created similar advisory boards already. Basig has been asking citizens what they think about this proposed cycling advisory board and we have J. Ralph Padilla from National University to share the results of this consultation. Following the consultation, Anton will turn back to you to ask what the government's next steps are. For now, J. Ralph. Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. I'm just going to share my screen. Go ahead. So, um, can you see my screen now? Yep. Okay. So again, good afternoon, everyone. Pangalan ko ay Gerald Padilla, isang university researcher sa National University Manila. And today is um, ipepresent ko yung resulta ng online at FGD survey na ginawa ng Makati Business Club with coordination with Pasig Transport at Pasig LGU. So sa online survey, meron tayong 36 total respondents. Sa FGD naman, meron tayong 35 total participants. Ito ang ilan lamang sa mga organization bike, at biking community na sumama sa ating FGD at online survey. Ngayon, ipapakita ko sa inyo kung ano ang naging resulta ng kanilang mga suggestion sa mga artikulo. So, sa Article 1 or... Uh, in outline ng general provision ng including the title and purpose of cycling advisory at article 2 which provides definition of terms used by cycling advisory ito ang kanilang mga suggestion una ang definition daw ng bicycles should consider e-bikes bakit ayon sa art article 2 ang definition ng bicycle ay human powered lamang so hindi nasasama dito ang mga e-bikes dahil ito ay pinapagana nga ng makina uh, Dapat din daw uh, gamitin ang phrase na bicycle commuting more often. At dapat lawakan din ang coverage of ordinance sa mga PMD o personal mobility device 
which includes scooters, uh, e-bikes, skateboards, dahil gumagamit din ito ng bike lane. Para naman sa Article 3, o yung nagde-discuss ng composition, appointment, and tenureship of the Cycling Advisory Board, uh, ayon sa ating mga respondents, dapat daw ay merong um, board members from Traffic Management at Bureau and Traffic Safety ex Experts. Uh, dapat din daw inclusive tayo sa gender. Dapat din ikonsidera na maging, uh, na maging members ang mga Pasig employees, hindi lamang ang mga naninirahan sa Pasig citizen. Nahihirapan din sila ang uh, intindihin ang Section 2B dahil meron dito mga terms na committee at subcommittee na hindi naman uh, napakita sa mga nakaraang section. Sa tenureship naman, dapat daw mas matagal pa sa one year ang length of service. Bakit? Dahil meron nga tayong mga uh, adjustment periods. Ganyan. Dapat din daw specify kung Sino yung mga pwedeng bumoto at hindi pwedeng bumoto na board members? Pwede bang bumoto lahat o meron lamang particular na mga members na pwedeng bumoto? Article 3 pa rin, sinasabi rin nila na dapat daw merong representative from bike workers tulad ng mga nag-grab. At least one city council pwede rin maging uh, part of the board. Dapat din daw i-assign through election process. Tapos yung mga bike shop owners daw, uh, dapat, din si dapat din silang mapasama sa board dahil meron din silang mga kotse, karamihan daw ng bike shop owners. So alam nila yung sitwasyon ng both uh, nagbabike tsaka may kotse. Isuggest din daw na hindi lang ilimit ito sa mga bike shop owners dahil uh, include din yung represent representative ng mga business in general. Para naman sa Article 4, which... Uh, outlines the responsibilities ng Cycling Advisory Board which regards to uh, bike lane network policy, bike lane network implementation, education, tsaka citizen input on cycling. Sabi ng ating mga respondents ay dapat uh, may implementation of programs that promotes yung safe spaces and bike commuters. Dapat din daw uh, coexisting yung mechanical tsaka yung depadyak na bikes kasi di ba, uh, they both use bike lanes. Pero para mapagana ito, dapat meron daw speed limit sa mga e-bikes. Um, isuggest din daw yung air quality monitoring system dahil ayon sa isang respondent ay karamihan daw ng mga uh, cyclists natin is nakakaranas ng respiratory problems. At i-promote yung uh, biking community with uh, proper facilities and parkings. Para naman sa Article 5, which defines the officers of Cycling Advisory Board, um, Dapat daw i-clarify yung sentence na vice chair succeeds the chair. Meron daw konting misunderstanding tungkol dito. Again, yung right to vote, sino bang pwedeng bumoto. At hindi daw na mention sa mga previous section na yung mga members daw is tatawaging director. Para naman sa Article 6 which describes the frequency of meetings sa Cycling Advisory Board, dapat daw merong monthly and quarterly meetings. Ito ang sinasuggest ng ating mga respondents. Meron din silang question tungkol sa incentive ng, meet, ng per meeting, which is 1,500 pesos per meeting. Masyado daw itong malaki. Ayon sa iilan sa kanila, dapat daw mga nasa 800 lang daw ang incentive. Dapat din daw mag-suggest na merong isang secretary for the council para sa mga minutes of the meeting, etc. At i-indicate din daw kung saan nga ba nanggagaling yung incentive para sa meeting. Para naman sa Article 7, which provides yung final provision of Cycling Advisory Board, karamihan sa ating mga respondents ay sumasang-ayon na sa kung anong nakalagay dito. Kaya may kita natin halos lahat sa kanila ang sagot, none or all good. At iba pang komento, uh, ayon sa kanila, yung bike lane daw hindi masyadong na-utilize. Bakit? Kasi ginagawa lamang itong parking spots ng mga kotse. Ang pinondohan na gobyerno ng mga bike cones, Madalas daw, sira, o hindi naman, ninanakaw. Para naman sa Barangay San Miguel, may malaking bike, bike lane problem. Uh, nasabi dito yung mga parking spots at yung mga biking cones. Dapat daw, antabayanan yung Barangay San Miguel. At lastly, yung accessibility ng mga bike sa ating mga PWD. Uh, overall, based sa aming analysis, parehas lang naman ang sinasabi ng both online at ng face-to-face uh, -face FGD.
Ayun lamang, ako ulit si Gerald Padilla at ito ang National University Team. Maraming salamat. Magandang hapon po. Thank you. Thanks, Gerald, for sharing the results of the feedback connection. Uh, lots of points there on the clarification of terms, length of tenure, responsibilities, and voting rights of the Cycling Advisory Board. Turning now to Anton. Anton, um, please do share with us what the government plans to do about the results of the feedback gathered. Um, so Anton, can you explain if Basic Transport has changed their mind on anything about the Cycling Advisory Board now that you've received citizen feedback? Do you still plan to have one? Why or why not? Um, yes. So actually, una, una, thanks uh, so much, Gerald, for helping us analyze the results and present it uh, in a way that uh, everybody can observe. I think um, definitely um, we're still considering it. Uh, it seems as a result of the consultations, there were a couple of issues raised, which I think were um, quite legitimate uh, in terms of clarifying the uh, terms of the ordinance and making sure uh, that proper representation is there. I think certainly um, we still uh, want to uh, polish this and edit it to make sure um, that we really reflect uh, what is discussed in the public consultation. And of course, uh, this is still something we want to uh, take forward because I think we have some good examples, as I mentioned, elsewhere in the Philippines. And uh, not only that, this is something that the DOH recommends as part of its active transport playbook to ensure uh, healthy and active cities uh, for everybody. All right. Uh, I'm so happy to hear that you're planning to push forward with the Cycling Advisory Board, um, taking into account the feedback from the citizens that we received. Um, was there any feedback that surprised you? Anything that particularly stood out? Um, I would say that uh, maybe the uh, the feedback that I um, thought was uh, were actually rather interesting was some, um, I guess, talking about the uh, like the sorts of um, uh, people who should be on the board. I think there were many um, people who uh, who gave some good suggestions about. Uh, having more types of uh, businesses on the board, I like the. I certainly like uh, the comments people had about uh, improving our representation for different uh, sectors, ensuring that the uh, sectors such as um, well, I mean people such as like uh, w such as women, such as uh, the youth were properly represented on the board. Uh, this is something we're going to explore uh, very closely and also line up with the uh, responsibilities that the board will have. Thanks, Anton. Great point. Um, definitely the, the feedback on the board composition was the most interesting and took up the most time uh, during our face-to-face -face consultation. Um, when does Basic Transport plan to roll out the Cycling Advisory Board and how do you plan to invite people to join the board? Um, going back to the point on composition, do you already have like a short list of people you want to invite to join? Well, I mean, uh, of course, we're, um, we're, we're, we'll, we'll consider how it, um, uh, how, uh, and who we can invite uh, when the um, when we get the list uh, up to where we want it to be in terms of taking into account uh, the the feedback of the consultation. We're going to, of course, discuss this with the uh, with the Pasig City Council. Um, I think the uh, councilors, I'm sure, will have uh, a lot to say. Will have a lot to say about this, and uh, we hope to submit it for their consideration within the year. Nice. So we'll have a Pasig Cycling Advisory Board ordinance maybe within the year and then maybe next year we can keep it we can launch it off the ground um notes on does PASIG have any other plans to improve mobility in the city and Terry share them with us now yeah well i i guess catch the um the, to clarify a bit on the timeline of the uh, advisory board um we hope to get into the council um this year but of course um the council i'm sure will um, schedule it for their regular schedule of their own um readings their own uh, official formal council hearings. Uh, of course, this is all very important in the process, and uh, I think respecting that this is going to be um, very important to the success of the uh, the success of this ordinance and this measure. So I think uh, uh, we're looking forward to that. We're looking forward to um, working together with the council on this. And uh, besides that, we're um, working on a number of different things. Uh, one of the things uh, we've also been asked to do by the national government is to work on uh, formally classifying Pasig City's roads in preparation for the. Uh, passage of a new speed limit ordinance. This is something uh, that the mayor has talked about before and um, working on classifying our roads and classifying which roads should be subject to higher or lower speed limits is uh, something that's going to be very important for cyclists as well. It's something that uh, many people in the consultations also asked for in terms of safer streets. So I think that's something people can look forward to also. Thanks, Adon. So good to know that uh, the 
FASIC Cycling Advisory Board will be really busy right away, working on the speed limit ordinance and working with you uh, to promote further ordinances. So this year's consultation, we focus primarily on working adults, right? Like employees and employers. Do you plan on conducting more consultations in the future to address other stakeholders, maybe students and the youth also? Yeah, I think um, we've got, uh, we, we, have, we now have friends, uh, many friends in uh, the Department of Education and the school's office that are um, also passionate about cycling. So I think hopefully uh, this is something we certainly want to explore to get more youth involvement uh, in good cycling and good, good urban policy. Thank you. Thank you so much, Anton, for sharing the plans of the government and your immediate next steps to roll out the Cycling Advisory Board. Um, now, to help us improve, may I ask the audience to provide mm -hmm. feedback on today's FD Live. Uh, today's session was short and sweet, but we still please ask you to scan the QR code on the screen or click the link my colleagues will place in the comment box. Um, we also request that you please like and follow us on social media through the links shared on the screen. Mm -hmm. All right, before we conclude, I'd like to call on MBC's Executive Director, Coco Alquas, to share a few words. Coco? Hi, I'm trying to turn on my video. Somebody has to turn on my video. There uh, you go. Sure. Okay, I got it. All right, there you thank, go. Thank, thank, thank you very much, Catch. Thanks, uh, Anton. Thanks, Frey. I don't think Frey is here, but uh, J. Rod, thank you very much from NU. Uh, for partnering with MBC in this year's Digital Democracy Project. In the past three consultations with PASIG, we have all gained valuable insights on improving mobility in PASIG. I look forward to seeing PASIG roll out the Cycling Advisory Board. We've been very pleased to be a partner in this process. I've seen all the different activities, including the live one, uh, I think that was two weekends ago in uh, on Emerald Avenue. Um, so th thanks very much to PASIG for for working with MBC and CAS on this. Thank you all uh, who are with us today and all who have joined us in the past, uh, but today for listening on FB Live. This is our final Citizens Assembly for 2022 with Pasig City. We hope we can continue this exercise with you once again in the future. More importantly, we hope we have, been, we have helped equip you or, or familiarize you uh, on how to conduct your own citizen assemblies and consultations whenever you want to consult with your constituents. Again, thank you very much. Stay safe and have a good Tuesday. All right, thanks everyone, bye. Bye thank everybody, you. thank you so much. Thanks, Don, thank you very much. J-Rod, thank, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.